There was a book I finished reading several weeks ago, and I have already turned it into the library. So this is from memory. So I'm not going to try to summarize the entire book. I'm just going to go over highlights. The book was called Aristotle's Children. And it started off with uh, Islamic Spain. Contrary to what a lot of conservatives say, it's not the case that wherever Islamic government is, or wherever Muslims became a majority, they converted or killed everyone. Because in Islamic Spain, back when it was under control of the Islamic government, uh, Jews, Muslims, and Christians lived together peacefully. They spent a lot of time translating Greek philosophy and Greek medicine and Greek science. But that's when um, Europe invaded Spain, that's where they got most of their knowledge of Greek philosophy because it had been lost a long time ago due to schisms between East and West. So East being Byzantine or Greece, which, which had Greece in it. So yeah, they didn't have Greek philosophy or Greek anything at the moment. Anyway, yeah, they, were, they lived peacefully until, you know, of course, the Crusaders came in and killed everyone that wasn't Christian. Some Christians they probably killed too. They just killed everybody. <laughs> I mean, the, the uh, Crusaders took over the place. And then, this wasn't mentioned in the book, but in Palestine too, a long time ago, the uh, non believers were allowed to live in Palestine. They just had to pay a higher tax or whatever. In fact, there was an incentive to not convert or die, the convert or kill them because they would lose money from their taxes. In fact, it, it seems that a lot of Jews throughout history have moved to Islamic countries because they felt it was safer in Christian countries where they felt that they would be more likely to be killed for their religious differences. Which I can't blame them. I mean, Aristotle's, child, Aristotle's children has a long history of... The book shows a long history of the Catholic Church killing people who have different views or burning them at the stake or forcing them to recant everything they said and just slandering anyone who tries to think differently. Anyway, yeah, another thing that was brought up was uh, there used to be a time when pagans and Christians lived peacefully together, but that's only because Christians were in charge. So when Christians did start to become more of a majority, they they sort of turn murdering random innocent pagans into a sport. Like there was this famous woman philosopher named Hypatia. And she kept the whole library and was really awesome and there's you no know, intellectual type. But she was also a pagan. So these Christian fanatics took her and tortured her to death and ripped her body to pieces and displayed her head publicly and other awful things. Yeah, so it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> to say the least. I don't curse much, but that's that's really bad. And this happened later on with um, with something known as the Cathar heresy. I don't call it a heresy though. I don't think it's a heresy. I think it's just a different opinion. But the Cathars, they wanted to somehow figure out why they're still even the world. If there's that one good, all powerful, all good, all knowing God. And they said it's because there's another god, an evil god. And apparently this idea had existed in the East. I say East, I mean like Middle East and uh, Eastern Europe. But yeah, anyway, that there's a good god who created everything, but there's also an equally powerful evil god who, um, you know, that's where evil, they do, that's all evil, all knowing, all powerful. So it does all the evil. I guess not all powerful because they're equal powerful to the good god. Anyway, yeah, they kept, they, they became really, really big in like southern France and northern Italy and Switzerland and Austria. They became very big and they, nobles started to join them. And they kept defeating Catholics in a uh, debate. So they pretty much formed their own religion in, within Europe and they're the part of, the center of Europe. And uh, the Catholic Church tried to just convert them all back to Catholicism. But when they, when they realized that this, mo this new religion, Catharism, was really catching on and that uh, left to its own devices would become its own new religion, it decided to uh, bribe everyone, say if you kill a Cathar you get all the stuff. And since a lot of Cathars were rich, 
uh, Cathars had lots of resources all together. I don't know how many, how many they were and how many wealthy ones there were. The thing is, is that it didn't really matter if you were Cathar or not during this crusade. If you live in a town that had Cathars in it, if you were a Catholic, they would just treat you like a Cathar and kill you. So that, that's, this is, the end of the Cathar massacre is where the phrase, kill them all and let God sort them out, because the, since the bribery, the largest crusader army in Europe was ever was formed to wipe out the Cathars. They went in, and they'd go to the town, and they'd slaughter man, woman, and child. Everything that was alive. Babies, too. They'd just kill the shit out of them. Anyway. But the, uh, the thing is that they were killing Cathars and Catholics alike. They would just wipe out a whole town, even though the town was a mixture of Catholics and Cathars. And they would just steal t steal everything they came across. It was just one big bandit army for God. <laughs> one big crusader bandit army. They really were just bandits who were also crusaders. It's a lot of time I think those two mixed together. Anyway, it was awful. Killed everybody. But of course, their time was coming. Uh, what kept happening, though, I noticed was that heresies or rebels, courageous people would stand up to the prevailing religion. They'd get smacked down by authority, but their ideas would still be exist. Because before they get killed or exiled or censured or whatever, they get their, I their ideas to sort of permeate the culture now. So yeah, their ideas of it will will be able to get out. And uh, after a while, it, it got to a point where uh, the Pope, if he wanted to do something like a Catholic massacre again, couldn't because people started to not like kings themselves, the secular part of Europe, sort of to not really like what the Pope does because he's kind of a Totali how he's kind of a totalitarian ruler of all Europe and how they, they act like feudal lords and all that. And there was this one part in the book and in history too where you know the only power what the power that the Pope had was in excommunicating people because when you excommunicate a king then everyone that the, that king is under is supposed to rebel and kill the king so they can get their country back communicated. Well, the Pope excommunicated the French king, and the French king responded by invading the, Af the Vatican and kidnapping the Pope, <laughs> and uh, trying to occupy the Vatican. And when the local forces were able to besiege the French, they finally let go of the Pope after kidnapping him, and then they went back and they uh, decided to create their own Catholic Church. So now there's two popes, the one in Vatican and one in France. And Germany did the same thing. They were like, screw you, we're going to have our own pope. And Germany had their own pope. So, not at the same time. We're talking about the span of like a thousand, like several hundred years at least. From uh, Islamic Spain all over here. Anyway, yeah. The, the, the king started to rebel, and the, the Catholic Church was losing support everywhere from all the heresies, I suppose you can call them. And, the, and also, one big thing that, was, that really made people pissed off at the Catholic Church, and why reform movements were created within the Catholic Church, was the fact that um, priests, for instance, would act more sinful than their congregation, like drink more and have see hookers more often. And this is kind of piss people off because it seems like people become clergy, not because they're religious, but for power's sake. There's another thing is that priests and bishops and cardinals would be filthy, stinking rich from uh, what they're doing because they're able to, uh, the, the church is able to tax everyone around them. But if you had a church next to you, everyone was forced to pay for it on pain of excommunication or whatever. So you had to pay taxes to the church. Which made people mad. And they were, they were able to just get so much money in donation that they were 
live like they, they had you would have clergymen who just owned massive amounts of land so they had like feudal landlords with these, all the they had massive amounts of wealth and power in every country that they were in this kind of made people a little upset um, and they also were always interfering in secular affairs, you know, the affairs of government and politics. Like at first, they had they had enough power to do so. They could they really did control everything, the Catholic Church. But this so much resentment brought up that there was a sort of a revolution against them until it was finally the, the point to where the Protestant Reformation could happen and just overthrow the whole damn thing. Which they did. Overthrowing happened. And now there's two... Now there's a crap ton of Christianities. Two main ones, Protestant and Catholicism. And I used to think that anything that's Christian but not Catholic equals Protestant. But now I'm not sure, because Mormons are way different. They So, the Jehovah's Witnesses are way different. To the point where it's difficult to call them Protestants. Even though they're not Catholic, but they have Jesus. So... Kind of Protestant, kind of not. Anyway, yeah. That happened. Uh, all, which, because of that, there were a lot of these Catholic radicals that were pretty interesting. I forgot the name of, the name of them. But uh, they're, holy, they're, they're monks. Some kind of monk movement. Anyway, they were a type of Catholic clergy who rejected money and land and these Catholic monks lived communally Franciscans I think anyway that's their name they uh that they try to get create their own reform movement within the Catholic Church to reform the, the resent to get rid of the resentment and get rid of the fact that it didn't seem very Christian-y to be to try to be use your position as a clergyman to become a wealthy individual me. So they rejected, uh, they, they lived communally, and they didn't own property, and they, um, they often begged for money, so they went around town begging and asking for donations. And another thing that pissed off the Catholic Church with, because the Catholic Church didn't like this, they thought the idea of, give, of voluntarily being in poverty and begging was somehow heresy. Mainly because of the fact, I think of their power. Anyway, these fra these monks were starting to marry people and do funeral rites, which is what the Catholic Church officially was, was the one that they usually did. And you get money when you do funerals and stuff. So the Catholic Church was very pissed off at these people because they were doing the, these monks were marrying people for free, whereas Catholic priests they get money out of it. So they were a little upset that they were getting in on their action and do, doing what they would usually do for free. Because these Catholic monks were, I think, uh, Gregorians, I think is the, the term of the, the reform movement, the Gregorian movement. Anyway. Radical poverty, uh, self-poverty and all that jazz. Going town to town, begging, asking for donations. So yeah, quite a cool. There was another part that, uh, that was pretty cool. Let me see if I have time. Uh, I have like three minutes. Abelard, Peter Abelard. This is probably my last point, and I'll end the video. He brought up an interesting point. He talked about. He created an interesting thing in ethics that you actually need to have knowledge that what you're doing is wrong for it to be wrong, or at least you have to have. You have to know what's going on. His, his question was, were the Jews really, did they really sin when they killed Jesus? Or, or really, um, should they be punished or seen as killing the Christ when they didn't know? They didn't know that he, he was Jesus. Well, they didn't know that he had superpowers and he was the Son of God and all that. They thought he was just some psycho weirdo prophet guy who was ruining everything. I didn't actually know that he had superpowers. Anyway, so yeah, he argued that they shouldn't be as killing the Christ because they didn't know that he was. They thought he was just some weird, crazy guy. He was ruining everything and causing havoc and 
of turning tables in the market because the marketplace shouldn't take place in a church. And, uh, and they eventually said that you all Jews now should not be punished for it because they didn't have any knowledge of uh, what their ancestors did when they were young. You know, they weren't there. They had nothing to do with it. There was no intent. So it's, it's sort of obvious now to us that morally you have to understand what you're doing and you have to have knowledge of what you're doing for it to be bad. Like, uh, if I just killed a cat, that'd be messed up. But if I just swing the door open and I accidentally kill the cat, you know, I wouldn't be as morally culpable because I didn't intentionally kill the cat. Well, for this, the Catholic Church is like, you are a heretic. No more college post. Get out of here. Get out of town. Because they worry that this would go a little too far. If you follow the, the path too much, you wouldn't be able to just throw sin on everyone all the time. Because people could say, I, the people could really, without lying, say that they didn't have any free will or they can't choose to do certain things or that they think certain ways. So, anyway, I brought real ethics against the Catholic.